Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Silver hair. Well, it's 2018 again, ladies and gentlemen. 2018, last week it was 2017, but we're now in 2018, which is awesome, which is wonderful, and uh, so much things which are happening so far. You know, um, right from the UK here, we've got so many things which are happening. Um, <clears throat> we've got things whereby um, we started off the new year. Hey, Lisa, how are you? We started off the new year with... Um, Knife crime, lots of um, stabbing, four young men got killed, believe it or not, they had a, a picture of one of them today, very young men, um, the future, the future is being thwarted, ladies and gentlemen, to a certain extent, the future is being thwarted, and um, you know, 2018 is going to be a year of reckoning, I call 2018 the year where it's going to be, uh, I call it going for gold. That's my philosophy and that's my thinking. You know, going for gold is, you know, if you think about Usain Bolt, you, hey Ted, how are you? Hi Jack, how are you? Hey Lisa, how are you? Fantastic. Uh, going for gold is whereby you aim for the best. You know, we're not talking about platinum. You know, like when they say God is good, they say God is good. They don't say God is excellent or God is great or better than this or better best. God is good. So going for gold is just like going for gold. Hey Kavit, how are you? Going for gold is, the think about Usain Bolt, you know, He's up and down and he's, he's, he's exercising and everything like that. We're not thinking about the time when he loses, you know. But he's just going for gold. He's aiming for the prize. So you have G-O-L-D. And when you get for the gold, you're also going for the G-O-A-L. The gold at the same time. So that is very powerful. That is very profound. And um, I see so many things which have been happening in news. I still will be keeping my eyes on the Brexit. Never keeping my eyes off the Brexit as much as possible. Because... Um, the plan is to leave the EU, and that's a government plan. Many people may be against it, but that's something we're going to keep a press on. We're going to keep our eyes on the whole issue with the knife crime, which is in the UK. That is something um, which is devastating, which is um, lots of guys are talking about. We want to really crack that. That is actually dealing with the home and dealing with young people. We're seeing where the NHS, ladies and gentlemen, for those in the UK, the NHS have been having a run whereby they have to terminate lots of um, appointments. So you can imagine that is really, um, really bad as much as possible. And across the pond, across the pond, of course, you got Donald Trump, you know what I mean? He's at war, he's at odds with everybody at the same time, you know? But guess what? He's the president of the United States. We got the PM getting into the royal wedding begging debate, whereby they are talking about that um, in leading up to the wedding with Merkel, um, with, with Meghan and uh, Prince Harry. There should not be too much begging, which is going on there. But what the prime minister is saying, well, the police and the local authority need to do something about the homeless person which is on the street. Um, and you know, so, so there's so many different things which are happening, but I said, this here is one where I'm not taking no prisoners, just going to go for issues, which are sometimes uncomfortable issues that sometimes people do not want to touch. Um, as so I was talking about the whole thing about, um, sexual abuse last night. And, uh, this is something which is on my agenda for this year, dealing with, um, issues of that. And I had a young lady yesterday, Miss Larissa Rizirone, and, I'm um, talking about that whole issue. And tonight we're going to put the spotlight a bit back on Jamaica because for a while now we have been hearing about the whole issue regarding, um, um, what should I say, whereby they, they have a um, situation in Jamaica. This is it. Sometimes they say uh, people are buying out Jamaica, you know. Um, Jamaicans somewhat don't have any contact over Jamaica, you know. And that is something which is very... Um, interesting whereby Jamaicans sometimes don't have the control of Jamaica and so I decided I saw something recently uh, and, and as you know on Facebook you see so many different stories going around and uh, one which really um, got me a bit really uh, concerned was when I saw um, this young lady um, Natalie uh, Roach, Lizzie Roach talking about a particular restaurant which she went to and told her to go back where you come from. <laughs> and, uh, as a result of that, you know, 
comes with ranting and comes with lag and her friends and everything like that. So I said, I'd like to talk about it, but I didn't want to just call her on now to talk about the issue about that particular restaurant. But something that really interested me was where she said she wants to launch a motivational platform which targets people of color to rise above the challenges faces in society. And then I thought about it for a second and I said, hang on a second. In Jamaica, targeting people of color. So I'm saying, hang on a second. Jamaica is a country with 85% of people which are black. <clears throat> I thought that was something for the UK. So I said to her, are you in Jamaica? Are you in the UK or US? She said she's in Jamaica. So I said, well, that's a bit interesting. I like to talk about that issue as much as possible. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you Natalie Roach. Natalie, good evening. Hi, Sybil. How are you doing? I'm, I'm cool. Are I'm, you hearing I'm, me? I, I, I can hear you. And I realize that you are actually showing off on people who are not in Jamaica. Because I think you're outside and I see the tropical look. <clears throat> While those are in Jamaica, those are in the UK or mm -hmm. Canada or the USA, we are in the cold. So we're wrapped up mm -hmm. and you're somewhere with some sunshine, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the weather is a bit on the chilly side. So it's not your regular tropical weather. It's kind of breezy, but I'm, you know, I'm appreciating it right now because usually, you know, the time gets hot. And when it gets hot, it gets really, really hot. Yes, yeah. yes. That's good. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining me on the show. And, um, you know, you can give your questions or whatever during the conversation. Um, I know there's a time frame that I have to work with Natalie on, um, but at the same time, um, please share this video as much as possible as well, because um, I want to really look at some key issues here. But firstly, Natalie, can you sort of give us in a, in a synopsis the reason why I was attracted to, to your story? What was it? I mean, it's going around and the video is seen, but give us a, a synopsis of what happened in Jamaica, in a restaurant where you were born. <laughs> okay, so um, as I had relayed in the initial video that I had posted, it was a situation where I invited my friend Candice Buchanan, who also did a video backing and supporting what it is that she experienced as well, um, Damien and Noel. They're both entrepreneurs, and I said, you know, that JoJo's is a spot where I have been to for the past eight years, and counting, well, it has stopped. No, the counting has stopped. Um, yes. It is somewhere that I enjoyed going. So, you know, I said, listen, this is where we're going to meet. This is where we're going to hang, and we're going to sit down, meet each other, we won't do much business. You know, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We won't do much of a business, business, formal greeting, sit down, talk about business all the time. But it's just to hang out, formalize ourselves with each other, get to know each other a little bit better. So I decided to take Candice down there. As usual, I walk in because there was never a cover charge. Yes. So I'm walking in and I'm looking for my friend because Candice don't know what they look like. She was on her phone. I was ahead. So I'm walking in, I'm looking around, they called out to me, I went over. Now, as I so did so, innocently, I started greeting everybody and introducing Candice when she finally made her way over. Now, she made her way over, she put her phone aside, she introduced herself, and we were talking. The gentleman who owns the establishment came over and he said, in a loud pitch. Hey, you guys didn't pay at the gate. You need to pay. You need to pay. You have $1,000 each for us. You need to pay. You need to pay. So without hesitation, we pulled out that $1,000 each out of our purse and paid it over. Mm. But then I felt uncomfortable within the way he did it and he said it, right? Yes. So yeah. Candice and I now decided to engage each other by looking at each other and saying, listen, this was wrong. You know, he should not be speaking to us like this. So I said, next time, if you have an issue, clearly we did something that we did not know about, right? What you need to yeah. do is to simply call us aside and inform us that, listen, you need to make a payment. There's a cover charge. When we walked in, there was no one greeting us at the gate. There was no one, there was no visible signage. Right. So I said to him, I did not see a sign. 
and I walk in as I normally would on a Thursday, not expecting to pay. I don't have a problem making the payment. The problem right. is how you dealt with it. He then alluded to the fact that he was not shouting and he was not above his regular tone. I said, yes, you are. You are. You were. And how you did it was wrong. Candace told him the same thing. Yeah. So he said, anyhow, anyhow, you need to pay. You owe us $1,000 each. You need to go. You need to just pay, is pay. That pounds or US so dollars? his wife. Pardon? Is that pounds Less or than, Okay. Just let, not even a pound. Okay. Yes. <laughs> less than a pound and less than ten dollars US. Okay. Yeah. So I went back over to Candice and I said, you know, this is a problem with customer service here in Jamaica. They think that you need their business or their service when you really don't, because there are other competitors around there, right? And the customer service in this country is really horrible. They need to change it. So his partner. She jumped in out of nowhere. No one was speaking to her. She jumps in, excuse me, why are you so belittling and condescending of Jamaicans? I have lived in Canada for 30 years, and I have, never, I have experienced bad customer service. I said, hold on a second. I said, first of all, I'm not speaking to you. Secondly, you have no say right now in this conversation because what he did was wrong, and you continue to justify his behavior. He could have called us in to a corner. That is all he needed to do. And to say, listen, you did not make a payment. There is a cover charge. Pull us in the corner. It was not done on purpose, right? So she said he did nothing wrong. She saw nothing wrong. I said, okay, listen, we're not going to have this conversation again. Yeah. I'm done with you right now. So Candice turned to her and said to her, so having your experience in Canada makes it okay for you guys to do what you just did here. And... She said, no, but I'm just saying that it is just absolutely normal. We know we get bad customer service everywhere we go. So Candice says, okay, but what you did is wrong. He then now said, you guys are just cheap and you don't want to pay. You don't want to pay. I wasn't loud. So I said to him, I said, you were loud. My two friends who were behind us said, actually, sir, they intervened now. They said, sir, you were loud. We heard you above all the music that was playing. So, yes, you were loud, and we heard everything that you said. He never, ever, at that point, stopped at, stopped at what he was trying to justify and thought to himself that his approach was wrong. He continued to defend his actions. So, at that moment in time, we started saying, you know what, I think it's time for us to go. We need to go. And this was among ourselves. So, you know, my other friend said, boy, we're in business and I, I have a hard time accepting this as being the norm. Some, this cannot be normal. Some, <clears throat> somebody just asked, what nationality is he and his wife, please? Okay, so they're of Asian descent, but they okay. are Jamaican Chinese. Okay, right. Hold on a second for me, please. Can you hold on? Sure, no problem. Thanks. Uh, Bianca Grant, um, just to answer that question, um, as you can hear, she said, um, Asian nationality, Chinese, Jamaicans, and stuff like that. One of the things that I, uh, yeah, okay, she's back, yes. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. All right. That's okay. So mm -hmm. they are they are Jamaican Chinese, right? Yes. No, I didn't want to create a scene because, you know, I just didn't think it was absolutely necessary. I just needed to get my points across. I needed to convey the message that what he did was wrong. So he started saying, where well, I want to go back where I come from. Where I'll go back where you come from. So at that point in time, I was like, okay, so this guy really wants to turn it into a confrontation. So, of course, on my video, you heard a colorful expressions that I had used to describe how I felt about his statement. Yeah. And then it became in my, some, you know, that's, that's, as a matter of fact, I don't think I need to explain or justify yeah. myself because at the end of the day, any other race outside of the black race that looks at me and tells me that I need to go back where I'm coming from, automatically it's going to suggest one thing, right? So I did answer him, and I said to him, you don't come here into my country, on my territory, on my property, and tell me to go back where I'm coming from. I said, I don't need your business. I don't need your services. And you think you're the only place in Kingston, Jamaica, that needs this business. No, we don't need it, right? So... When Candice turned her back, she says, you know what, we need to go. And when I go on TVJ tomorrow, since I'm visiting <coughs> and they're going to host me on TVJ, yeah, okay. 
I am going to make it a point of my duty to talk about this experience here at JoJo's. And when I get back to Florida, I'm going on Island Fever FM to speak about it. So the owner, the wife of the establishment, I'm presuming that she's a wife based on what I've been hearing, grabbed Candice's hand. And Candice says, excuse me, please to unhand me. So she says, no, 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 no. If it is that you're going to do this, you're going to regret it. Don't you ever dare go on TV. Don't you ever dare speak about my establishment this way. You're going to regret it. So Candice says, if you think that you're going to threaten me, I get away with it. You're making a sad mistake. Take your hands off me right now. And she refused to. So Candice flashed her off and she walked out. So we left and we went to the gate upon asking for our refund because we were not going to stay there. And I was not going to let him have my $1,000 because he kept that you do not value that $1,000 that I'm giving to you to be yes. in your space, right? Upon leaving, he comes back again. Go back where you come from. Go back where you come from. Really? That's, so, what, said. That's what said more than one time. Of course it was said more than one time. He said it repeatedly. Yeah? He said it repeatedly to my friends and myself. So at that point in time, there were two things that came to my mind. And I had a, I had a, like, sorry for the noise in the background. I'm outdoors. Sorry, everyone. Yes. It's not your traditional media interview. Okay. Well, so. Well, Oprah Winfrey Oprah. does media interviews outside in, her, in a garden. So that's right. It's, I think. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so upon that happening, two things came to my mind. And the first attempt was to really get physical. And I said, no, so Natalie, behave yourself. You don't want to get physical. You have two children. You want to set an example. I think saying what you have to say and being colorful is enough, right? So I won't repeat what it is that I had said to him on this medium. It was already expressed in my video, but I'll make sure he understood that what he said, he's going to get it back in his face. So because of that, his security guard came over and asked me to leave. I said, no, you need to leave your post. I said, you're standing as a slave on this property here. You're going to tell me to leave because a man is going to tell me I must go back where I come from and I'm not going to answer him. So, of course, I lit him up properly. I gave him exactly an expression of how I felt. We left. So I posted on my Facebook page my experience. I didn't go into any details. People started inboxing me, friends of friends, to the people who are connected with um, the owners at JoJo's. They said, oh, my God, I've never had this experience before. What happened? And I explained what happened. And several persons kept on inboxing me. So I said, you know what, let me do a video. And I decided to do it late in the night because I thought that was a time where I'd have less audience listening because, you know, it's the festive season. So I thought everybody would have been out on the road. <laughs> Little did I know that this would have become such a viral thing. And when I made that video, I was very clear. I didn't go into the details. I just gave a synopsis of what really took place. And... Um, you know, I expressed myself the way I did at JoJo's. And after that, I got some good support. I got reviews of people who had their fair share of bad experiences there. Mm -hmm. I've had even my white Jamaican friends who have told me they have witnessed it themselves. And some of them have not gone back to that establishment because mm -hmm. they realize that the treatment is different towards their friends who are of another color, which is black. Um... And so I realized that it's not just a customer service issue too. It could be, but it, it's, it is somewhat, and I'm going to say presumably somewhat borderline racist. But in our culture here in Jamaica, we like to have this thing where we push or we slide things under the rug and we don't want to call it as it is. Um, and it's so funny, you know, <laughs> when Trump behaves the way he does, and he does all the things that he does. And he says all the things that he says. We are the same ones. The very same ones who mm -hmm. behave towards our own fellow people. They cry out racism. They cry out racism when Trump behaves the way he does and says the things that he says. But when they do the same thing out here, no, it's not called racism or classism. It's just that, you know, you're 
it is whatever they use any they will use every other adjective to describe yeah. a situation rather than calling it what it is to suit their stance if you get me can i ask a question um why do you think that it really took off into sort of viral and so many people came on board is it was that particular restaurant or was it something which is ingrained in aspects of jamaica um it is a mixture of both mm. it is a mixture of both and it has hit the nerve of many it yes. is uh, the nerve of bad customer service experience as well as blatant racial discriminatory experiences mm. um especially, and I do have friends of Asian descent. I have Chinese friends as well, and I love mm. everybody. I'm just a, I'm a lover of people. But when yes. it is that you're going to come with the segregation talk and the behavior and the hate, it's not all the time I'm going to turn the next cheek. And I really don't believe in that because you get what you ask for. Yeah? Yes, yes, and yes. It, it hit a nerve for many. And so the reports that I've gotten and the testimonies I've gotten in my inbox has been that of similar experiences. And that lady seems to have an issue with keeping her hands off people because I have gotten or received <coughs> screenshot messages based on my video. People have been messaging their friends or discussing nice. the incident. And um, we have a big problem here in this country, especially that the, the Asians are here, right? They do not have the pedigree of customer service. They don't have the great business ethics. They're just here to make money. And so they treat our own people, our indigenous people, as if they're slaves in their own land. And we have become blatant disrespect that when you do speak out, you're either put in the spotlight as a bigot or a hateful or a racist person. So with me, where I'm concerned, I have a message for them. You don't come into my country. You don't speak to me that way. You're not going to treat me anyway and think that I'm not going to answer you because I will put you to task. And that is how I am. I don't back down. And you're not going to treat my fellow people that way either because I am not going to sit down and take the disrespect. So people have called me out to be a racist. Hey, fine. If you want to say that to suit your stance, to suit your emotions, go right ahead. It doesn't matter to me because I know who I am. I know what I stand for. And you're not going to use anything that is going to be racially discriminatory towards me. And I'm not going to respond to you. No, it doesn't work that way. You, you, you said something about that. Um, we tend to skim around things, put things on the carpet. Don't call it off mm -hmm. what it is. And mm -hmm. it's similar mm -hmm. to the discussion which I was having yesterday with Larissa Rizirone mm -hmm. in regard to sexual abuse, whereby there's mm -hmm. this... Um, epidemic of silence. Um, someone mm -hmm. just said a while ago, not borderline, that's blatant racist. That's what someone said. I know <laughs> yeah. you're being very diplomatic with your word, but someone's deeply <laughs> thought that's borderline, that's blatant. Mm -hmm. And another person mm -hmm. said $1,000 for someone actually assaulting battery, holding someone's hand, that's actually a, a, an assault in real terms. You know, and mm -hmm. so, so in a way, um, I, I think what, what is very concerning and what people are actually saying here is um, the bit about going back. And, and if, we, if we can sort of dissect this bit a bit, and this is important, going back to where? Okay, let's make it, let's, let's be real and be fair here. I mean, we, we in Jamaica, mm -hmm. we are out of one people. Some people don't like to hear that, but at the same time, 85% of us are black in Jamaica. I'm in the UK, mm -hmm. but I'm Jamaican. I'm from Ontario's, yes? So I've got mm -hmm. the right to speak. So you've got a situation whereby persons are saying going back. Mm -hmm. Asians and Indians and Chinese have been in Jamaica for a while. Now, what, mm -hmm. what, what, do, you, what do you think someone means? I can understand someone racist in the UK, US, even the USA, when somebody says, go back to where you come from. Actually... <laughs> The white person should really look at themselves and say, really, they need to go back to Europe or whatever like that because they, mm -hmm. the Arawak mm -hmm. Indians were there, not the Arawak Indians, the, the Indians were there first in America. Mm -hmm. Red Indians. Mm -hmm. When someone say, go back to where you come from, what, what do you think that means? Someone who is actually a native of Jamaica. 
Does it mean it's a good it's downtown, or uptown, or on the corner where you come from? What, or your yard? It could mean several things, but as I said, when another race looks at me and tells me that it's only one thing that's going to occur. And to be very honest with you, um, to be extremely honest with you, I can't own people's ignorance. I can't own their lack thereof. And I'm not going to take on that responsibility. I will address it, but I'm going to leave it alone because sadly to say, I, my expectations of mankind is very, very low. Mm. Um, we have not evolved the way we're supposed to evolve. You understand? Mm -hmm. And you do have his friends. I'm seeing some of them here who are trying to defend. They do not understand. I mean, defending whatever it is that I say, whether it is racist, yes or no. You want to tell me that it was packed? It doesn't affect me one bit. I'm yes. speaking about an experience. People have taken it on. They have spread the word. <laughs> if they choose to support, they can go ahead and support. And if they choose not to, because it's not affecting my pocket directly nor indirectly, it has no bearing on me. Mm -hmm. But I'm speaking out about something that I experienced and it was not pleasant. And that's simply what it is. It really is what it is. So whosoever wants to believe that it's blown way out of proportion, that's your business. Did you just read that? That is not my concern. Did you yeah, just read I see it. Oh, and, just fight. Right. And, I, right. yeah, yeah. and I frankly speaking do not care that is mm. not my concern that is your issue so you have that issue go deal with it yourself I, that's not my concern you have no say on my experience mm. that is my right so do not impose your experience on my own yes, yes. you do not I, feel what I have felt yeah. I, I've, I've seen I've, I've, I've read uh, before I, I got you on and I've been reading up a bit on it, I listened to Candice and I listened to the other gentleman, and um, mm -hmm. and I read the comments and everything like that. And uh, the only thing I can say to people when they're actually in this sort of position, they've got to stand their ground because guess what? When good men don't do anything, that is when sometimes evil prevails. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> you know, when good men don't do anything, and, I, and of course I'm not being sexist. Good women as well <laughs> don't do anything. <clears throat> um, somewhat evil prevails. And um, I think we got, did we freeze a while ago? Oh, you're there. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm here. I don't know what's going on with this. No, you turn upside down. Upside. That's all right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is important that persons speak out on things. Um, and as what this person says about blowing a bit out of proportion, 15 minutes mm -hmm. of fame on a dish. Um, sometimes these things can be a bit condescending. Don't worry, you 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 do what you're doing. Well, I'll keep talking. I'm sure you'll sort it out in mm -hmm. a second. <laughs> you know, you're upside down for now. For that time being, uh, yeah. You know, we we can turn around like that and try to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, hey. are you okay? Then? You okay? I'm seeing you. I don't know why this has gone upside down. I don't know what happened, but hey, uh, technology. Is that something you can turn the phone around or something around? If anything like that? Yes. Ah, there it is. Coming back. There it is. Oh, you got it. That's it. I got it. Stop. That's stay it. There. Stay there. Don't move. Don't do anything. Stay right there. Just stay right there and keep going. Yes. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. The, I want to move on because I don't want to keep it too long. But one, one of the things that you also said you're doing and this is what sort of really intrigued me was what you said is that you want to launch a motivational platform which targets mm -hmm. people of color to rise above the challenges facing society by helping mm -hmm. them to affirm self-love now you're in jamaica mm -hmm. and what i said earlier um 85 percent of jamaicans are black but you find that something like this is needed in jamaica am i right it's from jamaica yes You want me to you want to log off and come back in, if anything? Lisa? Natalie? Okay. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to actually um I think she's gonna she's gonna be logged out and, and let's see if we can do that. And thanks for the comments and everything. Um, I'd like to hear what your, your views are on this particular issue, um, which is interesting. 
I'm going to see if I can get her back in. Um, but another thing also which which um, Natalie is involved with, and, and that is she's a mother of two, which has sickle cell, and one, I think one of her children has sickle cell, and a member of the Sickle Cell Society of Jamaica. And she's an activist as well. Um, she's a certified stylist, makeup artist, and director of Roge's professional makeup artistry and commercial talent. You know, blessed evening, guys. You know, I see, it, I, I see the, I, I see that, I see that. Um, you know, but but if you think about this, if you think about this, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we have been talking about this for a while, and many people have been talking about um, the foreigners coming into Jamaica and stuff like that, and. And those are from the north coast as well. They sometimes see situations whereby the, um, the the foreigners they'll come and they will have great access to aspects of Jamaica and the natives somewhat get a raw deal. But I think at the same time, um, it, it is very important that we reach to this point whereby we can actually take back our country. I'll, let's talk about the whole issue down in the beaches as well. In the beaches, whereby you've got a situation whereby. <laughs> Jamaicans, to a certain extent, can't just go to certain beaches or which they grew up, grew up with. They've got to pay because most of the hotels are along those those coastlines. And somewhat there's a sense of like your country is somewhat slipping out of your hands, slipping out of your hands to the point whereby um, you have a situation whereby someone within your country is actually saying to you to go back to where you come from. And, and and that is that is very interesting, I must say. And that is very damning to the point whereby it's very interesting whereby Lisa is actually looking at wanting to create an organization which actually look at these particular issues. But let me look up on some of these um, words until Lisa comes back. Speak up, Lisa, full time now, rude. Um, Graham Anthony said, this is way out of proportion. The social media age, KMT, kiss my teeth. Um, sometimes in life it takes one person to make a stand for justice. Um, someone is saying, get off here. Um, blessed evening, yes. Spoke to the hounder. He said to go back to your yard. Ah, someone is saying, go to your yard. Um, the two rule is time we take a stand. Jamaica need to do better. No one is trying to get famous, right? Um, don't get defensive. Your video is proof. Take the proper high road. Don't get drawn into a low level dialogue. Um, you know, there's no place or classical racist aptitude in Jamaica. Um, someone said, does my country, does a country, my country, your country issue not add <clears throat> to and inflame those sort of experiences? Um, you know, one of the things I have to say, personally speaking, is that um, Growing up in Jamaica, you've got different friends, Chinese friends, or friends, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm never one that actually take that sort of high road, not that, that road whereby, um, you know, um, Jamaicans are, uh, what should I say, uh, Chinese or racist or whatever like that. I believe that everybody should be treated or taken on their own merit. Hey, Julian, thank you so much, yeah? And, and that is something which I believe is very important, that everyone is taken on their own merit as much as possible. You know, but he who feels it knows it. You know, just like the, the lady which I interviewed last night. She was being raped, she was being abused, so she knows it. She knows the feeling of being abused. Just like a situation with um Natalie. He who feels it, she knows it. So therefore, sometimes in life, someone has got to practically make a stand. And making a stand doesn't mean to say it's gonna be comforted, and many people are gonna disagree. Many people are going to um, um, like it. Um, I think she said she's back. Let's see if you're back. Yes, you're back. Fantastic. Let's see if we can get back, Lisa. <coughs> Sorry, Lisa is her Facebook page. Natalie is her official name and stuff like that. You know, so I believe it's very important that people speak out. I, I will never shut down people from speaking out. And one of the things that I'll try to do most time is to ensure that it's a level of fairness because if the company in question is not able to defend themselves, I'm not going to that sort of lambast um, such company for anything like that. Ah, you're back. It's, yes. 
You're back. We can see you. Can you see us? I can. Are you there, Lisa? Okay, fantastic. That's all right. I all, I was, all I was saying is that all I was saying is that we took a commercial break. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that and I'm going to pause for a second. Break. Continue saying what you're saying, Zilborn. Give me one second. Yes. Just give me a quick second. Continue saying what you're saying. I'm here. Yes. Uh, so, so ladies and gentlemen, I, I strongly believe that it is important, very important, for persons to to speak up, and they should be encouraged to speak up, um, because sometimes by speaking up, they may save a life, and it, it is difficult to somewhat put people down for speaking up when they are in certain situation, because so many things sometimes is put under the carpet, and and I must say. The amount of things put on the carpet, wherever you are from, Jamaica, UK, wherever, that carpet must be stinking and dirty. There must be tons of dirty carpets around, you know, whereby so many things keep putting on the carpet. And that is why sometimes people on their deathbed, sometimes they have many regrets and they start to talk about all these different things, all these different issues which has happened in their life, which they want to get out. And I believe for Jamaica, and um, Jamaica is a, is a country in question at this moment, um, we've got to speak up, we've got to share these things, and we've got to do it in love at the same time, but we've got to expose um, racism, we've got to expose things which some of people want to call it racism, they call it being racial, um, or racialized, or whatever word they call it, or discrimination, or whatever they call it, but it is so important that things like that is and should be addressed. And persons like um, Natalie, Candice and the person affected need to speak upon these things because I've heard and I've read uh, many stories, especially in customer care. Um, Yannick Page, a good friend of mine, she always speaks up about customer care as well, whereby it is somewhat felt like the customers do not actually have certain right. It's like, <laughs> come out of my business place, you know what I'm saying? Am I right, Lisa? <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to talk to you about the organization which you are um, talking about, you know, which you want to create in a country with 85% of the person of black. What is the motivating factor for that? I, and I'm sure you understand. You know, from, what, from mo what motivated that, um, that platform that I'm going to be using is a discussion that I had with a friend of mine. And the discussion took me on a journey that was an eye-opener in terms of how we view ourselves as Black people. <clears throat> and yes. truthfully speaking, I have been one of those that really just subsided it because, you know, um, Minister Louis Farrakhan said something many years ago on Oprah Winfrey's show that there's no such thing as Black and White or Black or White there is such a thing called ignorance and intelligence. And it stood out to me. I was only 16 at the time when I listened to him on Oprah. And for the viewers who are listening, I hope that you can understand the difference <coughs> and the, 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 the note in what he was saying. And growing up, socializing, being exposed, being around different, different cultures, interacting with different races, I really learned to understand, I grew to understand and appreciate what he meant by there is no such thing as black or white. There is such a thing called ignorance and intelligence. And mm. the, it, everything is psychological. Everything with race, yes. everything with us as black people is all psychological, right? And because of that, because of our mentality, because of how we think, and because of what we're trying to do now, I realize that there's a lot more work to do within the community. And yes. growing up being a black girl, right? I have, everybody who is my complexion has already been teased. They've already learned to hate themselves for being my complexion. It was my experience in living in Atlanta that changed that whole perspective for me because guess what happened? I, would, I, I didn't think or feel of myself any lesser than I would feel within my own circle of people because truth be told, we, it, we experience internal racism, which is called colorism, right? And 
we have a lot of internal conflicts that's eating out at us. It's eating out at our core. I have two boys, two boys, and it is very important for them to love themselves, to understand that they are right. And they having the color they have, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You cannot own people's mental issues because racism is a mental disorder. There is nobody who can convince you yes. otherwise. Have you spoken to, have you ever spoken to a racist person to hear their views of why it is that they dislike another race? There is never anything that has any structured basis applied to it. How can I get up and not like you because you're white? How can I get up and not like you because you're an Indian? How can I get up and not like you because you're black or you're Chinese? Mm -hmm. It makes absolutely no sense. And so we have mm -hmm. been projected. We have, you know, even now with all of what is taking, a place, taking place in the world, what do you convey? What message do you convey to the young black child? What message are we going to convey? When the media is telling you that being black means that you're a minority, which is foolishness. You're, on, you're following I want to stop. That's, that, <clears throat> that, that's very important. That's crucial. I mean, the, um, which you just said, a minority. I always say this all the while. I hate the word ethnic minority. Because mm -hmm. when I hear the word ethnic minority, I somewhat feel like I'm being relegated into some side. When you go to mm -hmm. supermarkets like here in the UK, you've got mm -hmm. ethnic aisle. Mm -hmm. So you've got the major, rest, major supermarket, you got the ethnic aisle. And therefore, right. you're actually relegated. And, and I believe, um, Natalie, that that perception mm -hmm. does affect the psychology of our people. Exactly. And we have to love ourselves. And so this is why I thought about doing the platform. And as I said, for years, I've just ignored it. I didn't pay it any mind because listen to me, let me tell you this. When I step into a room, I am queen. And I have owned that title for a long time. The reason I have is because you're not going to, not because I'm stepping in a room where there are white people or Chinese and in our country, you know, we tend to I, and, and I don't want to say this with people being offended. I want people to realize that when I'm saying this, we need to be objective and open and honest with ourselves. We tend to give them a different platform than we do for our own people, which is why they can continue yes. to behave the way they do, because we have given consent to that level of inferiority that they try to project upon us. So me being the person that I am, I am not going to priority so when i walk in and i step in i am the light so as dark as yes. i am i have told i have been told yeah you're big you're dark you're big you're this you're that i have told i have been told everything that is negative about being a dark skinned girl everything that is negative and i never yeah. allowed it to affect me you know somebody came on my post when i had done the video to say that she have a problem with herself she not like her color listen I have two children, and they are not by any chances mixed with any other race but a black race. Your father is a black man. Mm. Yeah? I have been black all my life. I've never attempted bleaching my skin. I've never attempted doing anything to look lighter than I am. I've actually grown confident being who I am and being this dark. Mm. So I have learned to love myself. And on that matter... A lot of women, my color, need to learn to love themselves. They need to understand what it is like to love and, mm. and to affirm love to themselves. They have to. Because if you don't, yeah. you're going to... I, I want to address... I, yeah. I want to address something here. I want to address something here. I, I, it, mm -hmm. it would be unbecoming of me if I don't do it. Um, mm -hmm. The gentleman called Graham Anthony Pollock. Mm -hmm. I need to address him because what he said is about JoJo's did Ram last night. Ram... Mm -hmm. And it means go back home. I think what I want to say to him is that, you know, it's not about Jojo. <laughs> and the reason why I brought you on, it's not about Jojo. It, Jojo is minimal as far as I'm concerned in regards to this. It's just like the, the discussion I had with a young lady being abused. Mm -hmm. And there's another young lady, Monique. And I said, it's not just about giving a platform to money, but using certain things as catalysts mm -hmm. to actually highlight some key issues. So we can keep talking. So I just want to say to Graham Anthony Tullock, I sense that there is a sort of relationship he may have with that company. 
And, um, and, but the bigger issue here is a mentality which I have seen and I perceive and what I've seen in regards to Jamaica. The red skin. Mm-hmm. Listen, I grew up in Jamaica. You got a red skin mm-hmm. and a dark skin. That is why sometimes people sometimes of a brown skin nature, when they come to the UK or like the USA, they sometimes can't cope because they're just mm-hmm. termed as black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All in that sort of level there. Mm-hmm. So let's call a spade a spade. And I just want to make that, I just want to let that land, land right there for Graham Anthony with all respect to him and so like that because this is not about taking sides. I just want you to highlight this issue to say that this is very important. So mm-hmm. please keep talking. I just wanted to drop that in there. Right. So with me going into a platform of my black is beautiful and my dark is beautiful, it really is to encourage and it's not and it's not a gender based platform because we need our men to be very confident in themselves so that we can build a confident society. And in doing so, we have to preach the words of affirmation towards them. You know, um, I try to stay away from those categories and the in the box, the stereotypical, oh, my black is beautiful, oh, I'm this, oh, I'm that. But the passion that was driven through that is me being a makeup artist and having to do clients, customers who are my complexion. And if I take out a foundation that looks a shade even slightly darker, or even their complexion, they will tell me that they are not that dark and they don't wear makeup that dark. And I'm like, but you are that dark. It's almost, it's almost mm-hmm. like you committed blasphemy, put it, wanting to give them their, their, their makeup shade. And I realized that there is really mm-hmm. a serious problem. And speaking to, uh, uh, speaking to Dr. Claire Nelson, um, I will soon give you the rundown on who she is, but she is a phenomenal woman. She is, she has worked with <coughs> President Obama, and, um, and she is a fantastic lady. And, you know, she spoke to me about using my makeup to heal women of color and helping them to build mm-hmm. confidence in themselves again. You know, and she explained to me watching videos that were circulating on the Internet about people bleaching their skin and their views on people being dark skin and it's just really sad. And in 2018, we should have evolved past this. But we're still stuck in a colonial yes. era. We're still stuck in a space where it is not helping us. It really isn't. And so, to be very honest with you, what has happened back then, it has still, to this very day, crippled many of us. And yes, we're coming out of that. We are coming out of that, but there is so much work to do. And even just with the recent incident that took place down by JoJo's, that is another one. But you know what is funny? I never allowed it to affect me personally. Because as I have said, and I will continue to say, I will not own your ignorance. I will not own your shortcomings because your behavior is your issue, not my own. And for those who want to deflect the issue, to make it into something else, go on. But I'm sticking to the issue. The issue is you made a blatant racist remark. And if that was not your intention, I don't know what else your intention was. And your customer service ethics is bottom barrel. And that is it. Simple. I am not going to go backwards on my word to suit anybody's ego. I'm sticking to what it is that I have experienced. And that is simply what it is. Wow. Well, listen, well, listen, um, you couldn't say it any better than that. And um, all I can say is that uh, kudos to yourself for speaking up. Um, it seems that by you speaking up um, and you didn't think it was going to go anywhere, it has actually freed up a lot of persons to speak up as well. And mm-hmm. uh, based on the comments and whatever I'm reading and from before, a lot of people are now feeling somewhat empowered. And sometimes, um, Natalie, um, Lisa, you have to have persons who are martyrs for the cause. I call that from the figurative sense. You got the literal sense where they die. And sometimes some have to die. That's why you got nanny of the maroon. You seem like you're from a punk. Are you from Maroon's town or something like that? A nanny, no, nanny spirit or something. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the spirit of nanny, yeah, the spirit of nanny. I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just whining from the figurative steps. But nanny, 
Paul Bogle, Sam Sharp, Marcus Garvey, um, George William Gordon, these are persons um, who actually stood in the gap. So you have to have persons who stand in the gap. You got to have persons who stand up as leaders. Leaders are not followers, remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So leaders are the ones that will actually put their head out there and they get chopped off, figuratively mm -hmm. and literally. You know, mm -hmm. so get ready, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm trying? So, so, so one must be encouraged for that and realize that I'm encouraging it because each person's call is called for a purpose and for time right. for a season. And right. nobody else, the call upon your life, <clears throat> the call upon your life is not the call mm -hmm. upon Graham's life. Graham's life no. may to support that company. Right. But your call is a bigger call. It's maybe maybe it's a global thing, which which right. you have to actually follow through with as right. much as possible. So I can only encourage you, um, my sister. Yeah, to keep yeah. to keep up the good fight. So, what, <clears throat> so another thing I just want before I before I go with you, um, it's interesting that you mm -hmm. you mentioned about sickle cell. Um, is, is it that sickle cell with yourself or your children? Sickle cell, yes. Is it with I'm yourself or with your children? My son, my eldest, he is eight and he has sickle cell. And I have been an advocate ever since birth. I've been through prongs of hell with him and his, you know, it, it's one of those illnesses that people are really not aware of. So I have been trying in very small ways to increase awareness. I've lost friends to sickle cell. I've lost family members to the illness. Um, yes. And with that, creating awareness, learning more about it, because you don't have to be a doctor to be heavily vested in your child's health and medical condition. You have to have an yes. understanding of what your child is going through. You have to follow up. And, you know, <clears throat> it has been a journey. It was a very dark journey to see your child almost dying, to have your child been, you know, I mean, my last scary event with him was when I was in LA and he was literally almost gone in my hand. And we had to leave from North LA to go all the way in South LA in an ambulance. He was then placed on 90% of oxygen. He literally was gone. And yes, yes. It, it was a riveting experience. With that, I use the pain to turn into passion to pursue the purpose of raising awareness for sickle cell. Yeah, and it affects a small population, a small percentage of the population, but a lot of people, it's very common here in Jamaica, and there are many people who have it but really don't want to speak about it because, as I said, it's not one of those chronic, it's not like cancer, it's not like diabetes, it's not like any of those that affect the majority. So they feel like they're a little, you know, sidelined. <coughs> they don't speak about it because they feel embarrassed to speak about having sickle cell because they're constantly mm -hmm. ill. They're constantly on medication and people don't understand yes. the challenges that they go through having sickle cell. But nonetheless, he's been doing perfectly well. He's on an agent of chemotherapy, which is called HU, which helps to repair his blood cells. So the 60% of his blood yes. cells that are sickled shape, they are shaped, they are reshaped with that chemo drug. So it keeps them normal, his cells normal. And though he's yes. not always 100% great, he still suffers from challenges from time to time. But I can tell you my hospital trips have been lessened for the past four years now since he's been placed on that drug. Mm -hmm. My guest last night, which was uh, Larissa, she's also a sickle cell carrier, and right. also uh, one of my former team, one of my former team members, um, Sophia Cunningham. She's in the UK. She's from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I'm going to link you guys with her. <clears throat> she started an organization in the UK um, regarding sickle cell as well, and that's the reason why I brought that up because um, uh, it seems like something which is another thing which is put under the carpet. So many things keep putting on the carpet. You know what I'm saying? Because of stigma on attached to it and everything like that. Right. Yeah. 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 We push things so, under the rug when it is not popular. Or we don't yes, want to yes, have to yes. face the reality. 
Yes, yes. So finally, before I go, um, um, tell us about your business. Tell us about your business. Just want to share your, your business and your entrepreneur um, energy because one of the things which is needed in this 2018 going for gold is for people to develop that entrepreneur spirit. I mean, right. we talk about the transformation of the Black Pound in the UK. Um, mm. The UK is on a drive for supporting Black business as well, whereby we support each other. But I have my philosophy is support each other and to make sure that we actually give good customer service. And of course, I've been following me there. Realize that I tend to talk about Caribbean restaurants. Sometimes I go in there and I talk about the restaurants and give a little review because right. I say I want to see the restaurants very well. So tell us right. about your business before we go um, and and get, promote your business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I am a Jamaican-based makeup artist, and I also do events mainly for the cause of sickle cell. And um, I'm using this plan. I'm also going over into life insurance because I do believe that investment is key. We have to plan for our future. And I, I've i decided to come out of my comfort zone and go for gold, as you have so put it, and strive yes. for a greater goal. You know, I'm not just restricting myself to being a makeup artist. You know, I've worked on, on set. I'm also a commercial talent, so I do commercials as well. So I would say multi-skill. There are sometimes the seasons are great and sometimes the seasons aren't great because it's just the atmosphere of being in business for yourself. You know, there are times you can't really pay your bills, you know, but you have yes. to keep determined and persistent and anything that you're doing that doesn't have passion involved in it, forget it because it's not going to turn out to anything. So for the platform of 2018, including my new, my newest edition, My Black is Beautiful, I'm going to be using it to help to heal and I'm going to be doing mini workshops where that is concerned. So I'll be doing makeovers, okay. wardrobe makeovers, image consultancy, skin consultancy. So we'll have a group of professional and different coaches that will be on that platform as well. And we'll be doing it for at least six times for the year, you know, and then we have the big conference that's going to take place in July. So it's a fabulous life experience. First one was last year, so we're doing another one this year. And it's really just growing from there. But it's not, for me, it's not just about makeup. It's the psychology behind it, and it's how you feel about it. And I think I'm just really more, it's not about me just getting a face and putting makeup on that person's face. It's about knowing how they feel, understanding their personality, you know, because it's not everybody likes makeup. And for me, most of the clients that I've, really like makeup but they like the way i do it because it makes them feel good and it shows the more the more enhanced side of them and they're confident because the truth is most of us when we get up out of our bed and we're going out there on the road we want to look our best we want to feel your best you want to greet everybody is greeting you by your face and that's your id right and i don't think that you need to be overly stated in your face you don't need to look like you're too made up but you just need to look simply tasteful mm -hmm meet and greet your clients or your day-to-day -day people that you have to interact with you know um so, there, so, so i'm really so therefore um, I, I, was, I was gonna say you mentioned all the, you mentioned all the makeup artists so when i was there last in jamaica and i interviewed uh -huh. miss jamaica um senator i interviewed mm -hmm. jamaica miss senator Mary. And kenya Mattis. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah it was jordi was my makeup artist you know jordi jordi yes i know jordi Yes. So 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 when I come back when I Yes, yeah, so when I come back again, I'm going to be she always say to her she'll be my makeup artist when I come back, but we'll be torn between you and her then to do the makeup when I because you're gonna organize you're gonna organize for me to interview Davina, isn't it? Miss Jamaica. Yes, I'm going to organize Bennett. for you to interview Davina Bennett, the beautiful Davina Bennett. And she will Fantastic. also be on our platform as well. Yeah. Fantastic. She's excited. Wait, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard that. I got a coup. I got the number one. You know, Davina is actually messing up the black hair industry in the sense of all these wigs and all these sort of things, you know, that <laughs> she, she's getting everybody going natural. Even even me, I have no choice. I have to just keep it bald. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, gee. Well, you know what? And that and what and what she's also started is a movement for people. Because, you know, funny enough, when she, when she was, um, 
when she was entering and we were watching her and I was observing her, I had another contestant I was rooting for. And I looked at this girl and I heard her composure and I heard what her passion was about. So this girl has a, has a pretty good chance of making it. Then the naysayers were like, you know, her hair needs to change. She's not going to win the competition because of her hair and she's not going to make it far because of her hair. She has to change it. She has to apply mm -hmm. and she has to get in the straight extensions and for a minute there I was almost in agreement with them just based on pattern there was Casey Fennell who yeah. didn't win and we thought okay maybe it's because she didn't look like everybody else with the straight hair and yes. with that said that Vino did what we totally did not expect well I expected her to reach far but for those who are saying no because of her hair she reached pretty far and what she has done, when you have someone on that platform at that level representing in a beauty contest where it is Eurocentric features that are always taking home the title as a Miss Universe or a Miss World, when you have someone like that that's walking in with their natural hair, just being natural, and I mean, to be very honest with you, I find it kind of annoying that we have to be talking about natural hair as if it is something foreign because that's what we were born with. This is what we were yes. born with. So for me to be going on about natural hair, and this is another thing that I want us to stay away from, the acceptance in a white man's world. That's their view of beauty. So we have to care and we have to understand what is our view of beauty. This is our view of beauty. And this is not, it, it, we're scoffing at this. This is natural. This is nothing foreign. It's not new. Why are we behaving like walking in with natural hair is something spectacular? It isn't. It really, it should yes. not be. This is how you were born. You were not born with straight hair. And the beauty about us being different races is that we have straight hair. We have curly hair. We have kinky hair. No hair. And no um, hair. And no hair. <laughs> hair is hair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this is yeah. what happened when we've been hidden and been and been trained to believe that black is not beautiful. Can you hold on a second for me, please, Silver? Yes, yes. Yeah. So this is what happens when we're trained to believe that we're not beautiful or in a white man's world, we cannot measure in a white man's world. We cannot measure our beauty in a white man's world. We have to measure our own beauty. And it's been going on for too long now. It's time for us to graduate and dismiss those inferior consent. Yeah? It's really time for us. We need to love ourselves. We need to accept ourselves. You need to love your big eyes like mine. You some eyes and big. Yeah? You need to yes. love those. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We, we just need to. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, well, I want to thank you so much for joining tonight. And this is just a start. Um, any last word before I just wrap up with you? Um... Well, the what I would like to say, and I'm going to go right back to that video, is that at the end of the day, if it is out there and it is what it is, you cannot, you cannot, and I say, impose your experience on someone else's. You cannot speak on someone else's angle. You can't speak on someone else's view. And I just like to put a word out there to people that we must not learn to own other people's behavior. We are only responsible for ourselves and our actions. And when we take on other people's behavior, that is when we get drawn into the cast cast and the back and forthing. Say what you have to say, be intentional and be purposeful with your words and understand that whatever you put out there, it will come right back to you full circle. And for those of you who have to think I'm racist, I have absolutely no knowledge because I know I am not. You're welcome to soothe your ego. I'm very sorry. And for those of you who are so and encouragement, I thank you very much and I really appreciate your feedback. And that's it. Go for gold 2018. And it's a change. Go for gold. That's for it. Change. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank you so much, um, um, Natalie, for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. And um, and uh, 
we're going to follow this up. And have you been back to JoJo's? <laughs> You're a troublemaker. Hell no. 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 <laughs> All right. I, I think I've been there before. I don't know. I think some guys took me there one time when I was in Jamaica last time. Isn't there a different house, isn't it? Yes, it is. Is it near Devon House? Yeah. Okay, all right, no problem. All right, well, listen. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much, and keep up the good work, and be encouraged. And remember this, always use this as an example. When sometimes you feel like you're alone, think about that in the Bible scripture with our Elijah or Elijah, when they mm -hmm. said you're all alone, and, and the mm -hmm. Lord opened their eyes, and they saw there are thousands mm -hmm. supporting. So yeah. um, you, will have to, you will have to have the gram, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I believe I believe this thing fundamentally called the black element. The black yes. element is where we learn to agree to disagree. And right. therefore, everyone has their views, but it is how mm -hmm. we impose our views on each other. But it's so right. crucial that we learn the art mm -hmm. of agreeing to disagree. And right. people have to respect the person's views. And your view is powerful and is strong. And I like that view as well. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So thank, All right. you. thank you very much. And um, and one more thing, if people want to follow you, can you put it in the, you can put a write up in the. Sure. In the I'm going to put it in right it. now. I'm going to insert yeah. it right now. They can follow me on Facebook. I'm Lisa Roach on Facebook, L-I-Z-A-R-O-A-C-H. And on Instagram, I'm Makeup Lisa. So if you need your face yes. to be done, come to me. Call me up. All right. And I get, I get 10%, yeah? And you get 10% commission, yeah. Silburn, when you get to Jamaica. Um, all right, all right. Respect, respect. And as I say, you don't kin teat. No. <laughs> In Jamaica. Yeah. You don't kin teat. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Lisa. Have a good night. All the best. All Thank right. You. Same to you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining. And um, you have heard Lisa, um, Lisa Roach, Natalie Roach. And um, um, just another um, opportunity. I decided this year to really go for gold and to really address issues which are uncomfortable and try to be fair as much as possible as well. And, you know, if you think of there are some key um, issues that you like to discuss, please inbox me. Um, you can go to info at silburn.com um, as well. And look out for my show this weekend, which is with Paula Perry. Paula Perry, which is as on the red chair in the studio, where she'll be talking about Black History. We're still talking about Black History Month. Black History Month is not just for October in the UK. Black History Month is not just for February. We're keeping talking about Black History as well. She's going to talk about Black History. And my philosophy as well is once per week, not once a year of a month to talk about black history. Black history is something which is prevalent that we've got to keep talking about it for children, 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 as much as possible. And that's important. But at the same time, we're living in this global world. And so we've got to be aware of all these different things. So I will always talk about the Brexit, the politics, um, Trump, the, the China, the, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you heard this, North Korea and South Korea is having some conversation soon. There's two phones which they have there, which one rings to, to answer call, want to make calls. And because of the Winter Olympics, they're talking about North Korea might be sending a delegation there. And then you got this crazy thing again, whereby North Korea is saying, my button is big. And Trump says, my, Trump, my button is bigger. So you got this crazy um, petty thing which are going on in this world but we've got to keep ourselves focused as much as possible. But I want to thank you so much for joining and um, see you around on the other side. And remember, 2018, my vision is to go for gold, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be looking at some of the comments as well and making responses. And um, you can follow me on Silburn Sidio. That's on Facebook because this profile, which I have, is always over the limit as much as possible. Silburn Sidio, which is, I think, over 6,000 there. You can follow me there. And as much as possible, do subscribe to the Silver and TV. Uh, do like these videos and do share it as much as possible. And let me hear your feedback as well. And if you think this is a very important and key issue. And finally, as I always say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you and may give you peace. Silver over and over.